welcome back to the Wellness Check. Today I am very excited to talk to you about maybe a book that you guys might be most interested in. And this is the famous book that I always talk about in my sessions, or in my videos, and in my sessions. Um, this is the Brain Spotting book. This is by David Grand, the guy who developed brain spotting. He was an EMDR therapist and came through brain spotting. It's a very interesting story. This book is both for clinicians and clients and just anyone who is interested in understanding what brain spotting is and how it can help them. I love this book. I'm not sponsored. I feel like I have to say that in every video. No one's sponsoring me. I just want to share the good word, the good news on things that could be helpful based off of the things that we talk about together. This book is very simple. It's easy to read. It's easy to learn. You can read it more than once to kind of soak everything in. And the chapters are very laid out in a, in a very simple way so that you can really understand what brain spotting is, what brain spotting isn't, how it was developed, who can it benefit, um, and in different areas of life too. So not just even talking about trauma, but David Grand has a whole chapter here on sports performance, which there's a lot of that in EMDR too. There's a, there's a protocols that you can use and specialties within sports performance, but this book talks about um, some work that he's done with his own patients and clients with sports performance and how wonderful brain spotting was for them. So that's something to look into as well. So in here, we've talked about some of these on our previous videos. We have outside window, does that ring a bell for anyone that's seen our previous videos? We have inside window brain spotting. We have what biolateral sound is, which is something that can accompany brain spotting and can really enrich the experience. Biolateral sound is tones, music, nature sounds that with headphones you play in one ear and then the other, and then one ear and then the other. And that's kind of what we call bilateral stimulation in the EMDR world. And if you're doing brain spotting and you have earphones in that are playing those sounds left, right, left, right, it just really deepens the experience. And it can actually help process things more smoothly from what I've seen in my work. Um, it can help people stay more grounded if they have issues staying grounded or with dissociating or anything like that. Bilateral sound is amazing. So it goes into that. Uh, we have what the resource model is. The brain body is the ultimate resource. So it talks a little bit about the neurobiology of what brain spotting is. Then we have gaze spotting, G-A-Z-E, gaze spotting. Um, the whole philosophy, right, of, of brain spotting is where you look affects how you feel. So there's different ways that you can get into it. This is not a cookie cutter type of trauma processing therapy model. It's really not. There are many, many different ways to engage. The dual, attain, the dual attunement frame. Dual attunement is something I've talked about in previous videos before. It is essential for being able to do trauma processing. Uh, in essence, it's being able to stay really grounded. You know you're in the office with your therapist. You guys are in the present moment. You can feel the floor under your feet. You can feel the couch under your seat. Um, under your body, you know that you're here in the office, but you're also allowing your mind to go back into something. You're allowing your mind to remember something, but at no point are you diving back into those memories or becoming absorbed into those memories. Dual attunement is very important for the window of tolerance and everything while processing therapy. Something that you'll see in this book, and this is kind of jargon for brain spotting is staying in the tail of the comet and <laughs> I remember when I was learning brain spotting I loved that philosophy let me tell you what that means to stay in the tail of the comet is our job as therapists so as we're doing brain spotting with someone and they are processing and maybe they go over into this direction and over into that direction we are not to entangle ourselves with that the whole point of this is your brain wants to heal, it knows how to heal, and the more you and I stay out of the way, 
the better and the more successful that that can be. So the patient, the, the client is the comet and it's leading the way on where the processing is going and the therapist is just kind of tagging along in the back. We're not changing directions for anyone. We're not moderating or telling someone what to think about or not think about. We are simply there right next to them, following their every move, staying very attuned to them and letting them kind of process as they need to. Now, of course, as a brain spotting therapist, part of our job is to make sure that they're okay and that what they're processing feels tolerable and all of that. But I always loved that saying of staying in the tail of the comment. So that's in the book as well. Um, let's see, we have Z axis. We have more brain stuff, neurobiology. We have brain spotting and the body. The body is memory. That might be one of the most fascinating chapters of this whole book and I can go into that too. Here's chapter 11 is brain spotting and sports performance. So he shares some personal stories uh, of some clinical work that he's done with, with high performing athletes and barriers that they have hit uh, for one reason or another and how brain spotting helped them to get right back to where they wanted to be as confident triumphant athletes brain spotting and creativity there's a lot of research out there in regard to how trauma can stunt one's creativity so you might have heard buzzword the buzzword now it's just everywhere the vagus nerve uh, it's the mind-body connection and through trauma uh, that mind-body connection kind of gets metaphorically severed and through that there are symptoms such as loss of creativity loss of being able to get into something whereas if someone used to be a creative writer they have writer's block whereas if someone was an avid painter or artist they have a hard time getting into their work again they feel stunted um, other byproducts of that or symptoms of that are social stagnation, developing social anxieties, whereas maybe they didn't have that before. There's lots of things that come out of that. So that's this is a really good chapter as well. You will see a chapter in here called self brain spotting. This is the one I'm going to use just a little bit of caution with. Um, in this chapter, he guides you on practicing practicing brain spotting just a little bit to where you can begin to practice finding spots in your visual field you can practice finding an activation spot you can practice finding a resource spot see my other videos to know what those mean um, and you can kind of work on what i would consider very minimally activating things. I would not recommend someone to read this book and then try to do their own brain spotting with very traumatic or upsetting or deep or chronic things. Leave that to the therapy experts, the counselors that specialize in brain spotting. You just don't want to go down that road by yourself. Um, but it's kind of fun to just get a little idea of what does this feel like? What is, what, how do I know? How do I know? Even if I were to just do it in the comfort of my own home, what would this feel like? And so you get a little practice at that in this book, which I think is pretty cool. Just remember what I said about the deep stuff. Leave that to the therapist, please. Um, then we have the future brain spotting and all the other things. This book is amazing. It is very thin. It is very easy to read. And for those of you who have been to a brain spotting therapist before, this book might actually really help to send it home, so to speak, really just bring it all together and further understand what your therapist is doing with you, how it works. If you are a clinician, this book is just vital. I mean, all clinicians I feel like need this book, especially if they're trauma informed therapists, or if you're thinking about getting into the field of trauma work, and or brain spotting. This is a must, a absolute must. But anyone else just kind of curious about the modalities that are available, brain spotting, EMDR, all these limbic system therapies um, are very popular and they're growing and I'm happy that they're finally growing and more people are searching for 
brain spotting therapists and the more the merrier as far as I'm concerned. So this is the book for the for the day. David Grand, you can also check him out on um, YouTube. He has great videos, um, kind of maybe even demonstrating some of his sessions to see what it looks like to be in a therapist's office doing brain spotting. I am not sponsored by David Grand, but I love his work and I'm a big fan of it and I do it every day in my office. So here you go. There's your next tip. Brain spotting, David Grand. Hope you enjoy it. As always, thank you for checking in with your wellness. I'll see you soon.